I take four pills each morning, and I'm told that each one is $100 a week. So, and I do that every day. Hopefully, it'll stop the cancer for a while. There's no way today that a man uh, would be able to do this on their own without insurance costs or without the uh, 0360 program. One in nine men get prostate cancer, but as you get older, even more and more, you know, are affected by the disease. It's a damn scourge, and uh, you have to make a positive out of a negative. It is my honor to introduce you to the wonderful man you just saw in that video, Mark. Thank you so much for joining us from the Hagen Boot Compound in Pennsylvania. Good to be here, Caitlin. Here I am. <laughs> we are so glad to hear that you're taking quarantine seriously. As a prostate cancer patient, tell us what your life has been like since the outbreak. Oh my. Well, um, actually before this. I was very busy almost every day. I had something to do, even with this stage four prostate cancer. I'm busy uh, moving around. I'm involved with several other organizations. So I would be on the road every day and um, going different places, you know, meeting with people. So my wife has taken this very, very seriously. And of course I do too. But Linda is, of course, my number one caregiver and she said, we are not doing anything and I'm not <laughs> going anywhere. We are staying here. There's enough for us to do around the house. So there actually is, uh, as you said, it's called a compound or I call it the compound. We have an acre of land. We have a large rambling house where we raise the kids. Uh, I have all, all my hobbies spread out here. We have an outbuilding, which I call the barn. Uh, there's just so much to do. And Linda and I, as a great married couple that get along wonderful, uh, we tend to have our days planned with uh, cooking. We are foodies. We love to eat, which isn't, of course, good for <laughs> what's going on necessarily. You look great. <laughs> but, um, and we play games together. We have board games and card games that we play every day. So it's, uh, wow. it's, been, it's been a little bit different, but at the same time, we both say, my goodness, I think that we could become hermits. And oh move. my goodness. Well, yeah, we've been following you on social media and it looks like it's, it's an amazing place to quarantine. So that's good that Linda's got gotcha you with the activities to do. It sounds like you're never bored. No, no <laughs> never bored. Uh, yeah. Right before we signed on here, we were in what we call our front room and that's where a lot of my genealogy stuff is. And I have boxes full of newspaper clippings, photographs, old pamphlets, old documents. And Linda says, we're going to go through these and actually organize them. So that's what we did for a few hours before I signed on. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sounds like she's got you on a honey-do list, finally getting through that list and, after all these years. And actually, it's almost my do list, <laughs> not, <laughs> not necessarily hers. Uh, right. But as you know, as I said, there's so much to do. I play the piano, and of course, cool. I sat. I sit once in a while and play the piano. And genealogy is really big with my son and I, so I'm catching up on all of that. Uh, but I still keep yeah. in touch also with the or other organizations, the Historical Society here, and several other 18th century groups, which I'm very much involved with. And we do Zoom, or we do emails, or I do a lot of phone calls. Oh, nice. That's great. Awesome. Well, you're such a huge part of our Zero family, um, from the summit to the Zero Prostate Cancer Run Walk Harrisburg, and of course, leading Team Angus. Tell our viewers a little bit about your journey to Zero. 
Well, it was a real shock to me in May of 2016 when I was diagnosed with stage four right off the bat, stage four prostate cancer. I didn't even know, unfortunately, like many men, I didn't even know what my prostate did, I don't think. Uh, It sounds strange, and I can (laughs) laugh about it. I sure know now because it doesn't do anything anymore. (laughs) But... um, but with stage four, it was uh, I was diagnosed. I was given uh, several scans, and it was metastasized in my spine. So it was already out of the capsule. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we decided not to operate, and I went through chemo, pretty hardcore chemo, with Taxotere, and then I was on. Uh, radiation not only on my spine, which was at the same time as I was getting uh, the, uh, the the chemo, but also then afterwards, I had 43 radiations altogether in the prostate oh spine. So by December 31st, the very last day of December, I was finished with those things, but I was already on Firmagon, which are stomach injections to keep the testosterone you know, very low. That's the layman's way to look at it anyway. And things went along pretty well for about a year and a half or so. My PSA was undetectable. There was a few little flare-ups here and there. But then it all started again last year. And mm. 2019, um, it, was, it was raising again. Because, again, layman's terms, uh, prostate cancer seeks and destroys. And it was seeking out testosterone, which are other places in my body. Mm. And uh, so. It was uh, growing again, and my hip, uh, scapula. I even have a tiny little bit in my skull. And so I went through immunotherapy, and I started Zofigo, which are injections of radium-223. But after three of those, we had a PET scan, and it was raising. PSA was raising. It wasn't raising a lot, but mine has never really gotten above, much above a, an eight which is very strange, uh, but that's just the way my DNA is or my body structure. So uh, no. we immediately stopped everything. I have a fantastic support team in my doctors. Uh, Dr. Urology Ray, in central Pennsylvania, uh, right? Dr. Cockle, uh, all those people, you know, are just fantastic and they work yeah. together. So uh, we started Extandy right away in December. And so now the latest PSA I had, which of course was six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, because I haven't been to the doctor personally since that time. Uh, Mm -hmm. Again, my PSA is down to undetectable. That's a very, very good thing. The problem is I haven't been able to go to a hospital to get a PET scan to see exactly if it's going on. But I think Probably uh, I'll be there maybe in a few weeks or at least a month. I do have a doctor's appointment with Dr. Renninger, my oncologist, in uh, mm-hmm. two days, uh, actually tomorrow. And we'll do a video conference as we did a month ago. And at that wow. time, we'll decide about the, the PET scan. Yeah. Wow. So today is Giving Tuesday, and we are trying to raise $25,000 for the Zero COVID-19 Support Fund. That fund allows us to help more men with Zero 360, Zero Connect, and our mentor programs. Now, I know that you mentioned a little bit about um, needing to see your doctor via video conference and that sort of thing. So what is your message to someone thinking about donating right now to the COVID-19 support fund? Well, I'm very fortunate in that, you know, I can, um, I can get the, the only thing that I really had to go to my urologist for is my stomach injections of Firmagon, and everything else has been video with my oncologist. However, I know there are men out there that, that need the scans, that need chemo, that need radiation, as I did four years ago. If it was four years ago, I would be using 0360 to uh, get to you know, my doctor's appointments and calling on zero, which of course is my, my other family, to uh, make arrangements to get me there and to make arrangements. Um, you know, there's so many things that zero does. Uh, I know that in the one video I talked about the cost of the Xtandi that I'm taking, it's just uh, phenomenal. 
the cost. Uh, I have very good insurance. However, if I didn't, again, I'd be calling a zero, you know, zero 0360 to help me with all these different things. So it's very, very important that even in this time of economic problems because of the virus and having to stay at home, businesses being shut down, that people think about the men, the families out there who still have to continue to fight prostate cancer even after this virus is over. So any donations at all are going to be very worthwhile for all of us men fighting this, as I call it, the damn scourge. That's right. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being here with us on Giving Tuesday. You and your family stay safe, stay healthy, stay zero strong. Oh, zero strong all the way. Zero strong. Thank you so much. And thanks, Zero, for everything they do for us. You know, donations are important. Uh, all through the year because this continues on, as I said, even when the virus is over, uh, we are still fighting and fighting and fighting uh, for everyone out there with prostate cancer. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.